Hello, my name is Nico and I am with the Shared Spaces team. Today I'll be showing you how to import and modify an object with Sculpt GL. We will move through all the steps from navigating the website, importing a scan, modifying your object, and exporting your file. You can skip to relevant sections by clicking on the chapters in the description or by scrubbing to the markers in the timeline. This will be a basic introduction to the program. SculptGL is a web-based modeling app, so no downloads are needed. You only need an internet connection to access this program. To navigate, use the middle mouse button to move the camera. Right-click on your mouse to rotate, and scroll to zoom in and out. The program will start with a default sphere. To delete all the objects, click the Scene tab and click Clear Scene. To import an object, click the Files tab at the top left. Click Add. You can see the compatible file types listed on the menu here. I will be importing an object file or a .obj file. Object files have separate textures, so they will import without any texture. To add your texture, click the Rendering tab on the right-hand side, change to the UV shader, and click Import. Then click on your texture file, which is usually a JPEG or PNG file. This importing process has worked consistently for me with the scanning apps Luma AI, Scanniverse, Kiri Engine, and WIDAR. However, importing results could vary depending on your scanning app and on the quality of your scan. For more information on how to get the best scan possible, be sure to check out our scanning tutorials. A helpful option when working with 3D objects is to turn on the wireframe. This visualizes the mesh of your object, which is a framework made up of many small flat faces. The faces on this mesh are triangular, as you can see here. Edges are what are the straight lines that make up each side of each face, and vertices are each corner of your face, where at least three edges meet. You can see the number of faces and vertices in your object in the top right corner of the screen. This is an important number to keep in mind, as the more faces and vertices your object has, the larger your file size will be. You can lower the file size and the resolution of your object by clicking on the Topology tab and using Voxel Remeshing. Quads will create a new mesh with four-sided, square-shaped faces while manifold tries will use three-sided triangle faces, like shown previously. If you remesh your object, you will lose your imported texture. However, you can still use the built-in shaders and create new textures with the paint tool. SculptGL has many tools to modify your object. For this video, I will go over a brief summary of them all. There are some advanced options available for most of these tools that I encourage you to explore once you have familiarity with the basics. This is the transform tool, which modifies the position of your object. To move the object, grab the arrows to move in the arrows direction, or grab a face of the middle square to move the object anywhere on that plane. To rotate, click and drag the colorfully highlighted curves of the circle. To make the object bigger or smaller, grab and drag the outermost circle. And to stretch your object, click and drag on the squares here. The brush tool adds more material to your object. The radius slider changes the size of the area that you are modifying, and the intensity changes how much is changed. In this case, it changes how much new material is added each time the mouse drags. While I won't go over every advanced option listed here, I will point out the negative and the symmetry settings. Once the negative box is checked, it removes material from the object with the same method the tool uses to add material. So here, instead of painting on new material, it scrapes material off with the same shape and texture it was painted on with. Symmetry allows you to make the same modifications on the left and right side of your object. You can see that while I originally had one red dot visible, when I click on Symmetry, 
a second dot appears, showing where my changes will be made on the other side of the object. Radius, intensity, negative, and symmetry are options for most of the following tools that I will be going over. Inflate is similar to brush, but instead of adding on layers like a paintbrush, you are inflating on a certain point of the object, like a balloon in a spherical manner. With twist, you can see the material twists on a pivot point where your mouse clicks and drags. Smooth is a tool that smooths and softens sharp edges of your object. If used continuously with a strong intensity, it will radically change the shape of your object. However, if you click relax only, it will maintain your general shape while softening only the outermost sharp edges. Flatten is similar to smooth. However, it will aim to fully flatten the area you are clicking on to a flat plane instead of only softening the shape of your object. With pinch, the tool pulls together in a circular manner around and towards the point you were clicking on. Crease works similarly, while also creating a crease that dips into your object. To stretch more specific parts of the object, use the drag tool or the move tool. Both tools are very similar. However, move has more options for subtler or more controlled movements. The paint tool adds to the material of your object, changing the color but not modifying the shape. Radius changes the size of your paintbrush, intensity changes the opacity, and hardness changes how hard the edges of your lines are. Here, you can change your colors. Again, there are more advanced options here for more control and varying materials to paint with. Masking is a helpful tool where every area you cover in black will not be changed. For example, if I mask over this area and then try to paint over it, the masked area will not be affected even though my mouse dragged over that area with the paint tool. Local scale modifies the scale of the object, but only within the radius selected. To undo any change you make, hit Control Z or select Undo in the History tab. You can change the max stack number, which modifies how many changes the program will remember and let you undo. I recommend having this number as high as possible to make undoing changes that much easier. When you are finished, you can export your model by clicking the Files tab on the top left. Object and FBX files are often good choices for working with AR. However, if you'd like to 3D print your object, STL files will be able to be brought into a slicing software to prepare the model for 3D printing. Manipulating 3D scans of objects is just one of the steps we cover in our AR Production Pathways learning materials. Please visit our Shared Spaces website or YouTube channel to find other videos for your augmented reality workflow.